A wood look accent wall can be a stunning showpiece for your home. And we're gonna show you how you can have one. It's a simple DIY project you can complete over a weekend. And it all starts with Pergo Laminate Flooring. The same Pergo Laminate planks that create beautiful floors can be used as a decorative covering over just about any existing wall, providing that it's clean, dry, secure, vertical, and meets all local building code requirements. Be sure to read all wall instructions before you start your installation. Start with a bare wall substrate. It should be primed or painted drywall. Pergo planks shouldn't be installed directly over wallpaper or paneling. Also, keep in mind that laminate planks are not intended for ceilings, countertops, or as any type of structural material. Your accent wall must run vertical to the floor. Sloping walls or surfaces that aren't 90 degrees to the floor, like ceilings or soffits, won't work and shouldn't be used. You'll also want to limit your installation to a maximum of 40 feet in length and 10 feet in height. It's important to note that laminate is only suitable for wall applications when used indoors with a controlled climate. This means 35 to 65% humidity and 60 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Check the wall for moisture, visible water stains, or leaking windows. You should not install laminate over a wall with known moisture damage. And don't install laminate in areas near water sources, like a backsplash or above a sink or bathtub. To find out how much flooring you'll need, multiply your wall's length by its height to determine the square footage. Make sure to subtract the areas of any windows or doors that you will install around. Order that amount of flooring plus an additional 10% for incorrect cuts. Before you install your accent wall, you'll need to acclimate the planks in the room in which you're planning to install them. Leave the boxes unopened and lying flat in the room for at least 48 hours prior to installation. You want your laminate accent wall to look great and last, so it must be installed with acceptable job site conditions, including relative humidity and wall moisture conditions. Plus, these conditions must be maintained throughout the life of the wall to ensure it looks great for years to come. And as on any building project, you're responsible for compliance with all local building codes, including maintaining the required distance from heat sources, such as fireplaces. The tools you'll need for this installation include a hammer, a uniclick appropriate tapping block and a pull bar, a caulking gun, utility knife, chalk line, and electronic stud finder, a tape measure, a pencil, and a saw for cutting laminate planks, a carpenter's level or laser level, a pry bar to remove existing base or trim, an 18-gauge brad nail gun, either electric or air, a screw gun or drill driver, a stepladder if needed, safety glasses, a dust mask, and gloves. Some of the materials you'll need include laminate flooring, enough to cover the installed area plus 10% extra, one and a half to one and three quarter inch brad nails, one and a half to one and three quarter inch drywall screws, 100% silicone adhesive caulk, clear, wall base and quarter round moldings to frame out the accent wall, and painter's tape. We'll start the installation by checking the surface of the wall for flatness. The wall should be flat to within 3 16 of an inch over 10 feet. If the wall is not flat, correct the unevenness before installing. A flat wall is important because the planks must lie flat against the wall without rocking for proper installation. Next, remove all base and trim molding from the accent wall. Use your electronic stud finder to locate and mark the wall studs. Mark vertical lines over all studs. Use painter's tape to extend stud location to the ceiling if needed. You'll need to turn the power off while working around wall outlets and light switches. Pay special attention to avoid contacting any electrical wiring. Open the boxes of planks and inspect each plank for damage. You don't want to install any damaged material. You can use laminate planks with or without an attached pad. There's no need to remove the pad 
So treat the installation the same for both types of planks. We'll select enough planks to create the first row on the bottom of the wall and lay them on the floor with the decor side face up and the groove side toward the wall. Click the end of the planks together, then measure the length of the plank needed to complete the row. Make sure you leave a 3 16th inch gap against any adjoining wall on both ends. Cut the plank to fit and click it into place. Carefully flip the connected row of planks over so the decor side is now face down and the tongue side is toward the wall. You may need assistance to flip the connected row of planks over, depending on the length of your installation. Keep in mind that when you later place this first row of planks against the wall, you may need to adjust the placement to account for any unevenness in the floor. Make sure that the first row is perfectly straight and the aligned joints remain square and tight. Apply a bead of 100% silicone in an S pattern to the back of each laminate plank. If you're using a laminate plank with an attached pad, apply the silicone directly onto the pad on the back of the plank. Carefully tilt the planks against the wall with the tongue side toward the floor. Re-level the planks and press them against the wall. Locate the extended groove at the top of the plank and drive a brad nail through the groove at each wall stud. It's important to make sure that the nail heads are not raised, but don't try to force them all the way through the planks. Next, place drywall screws into each wall stud along the bottom edge of the first row of planks. This area will eventually be covered by wall base. Now it's time for the second row. For this row, and all rows thereafter, we must start installing the first plank in each row on the right side of the wall and work from right to left. Cut off the short side tongue end of the first plank of the second row to provide a joint stagger of 8 to 12 inches. This creates a more natural looking pattern and will help avoid planks that align. Apply the S pattern of silicone to the back of the plank and fit it into the plank on the first row by angling the tongue into the groove. You may have to wiggle the plank into place. Be sure to leave a 3 16th inch gap from any adjoining walls. Use a tapping block as needed. Drive a brad nail through the extended groove at each wall stud. Take the next plank in row two and modify it by removing the short end tongue. Score the tongue with a utility knife three to four times and then remove it. Now you have a square end. You will repeat this process for all remaining planks in row two. Apply silicone adhesive caulk in an S pattern and install the modified board by tilting it into place. Tighten the joints as needed with a tapping block or pull bar. Continue to drive brad nails into the extended grooves of each plank at each wall stud. For row three and all full height rows thereafter, repeat the process used for row two. For the last row, you'll want to use painter's tape to mark the stud location for your brad nails. Cut all planks in the last row to the required width to complete the installation. Complete the installation as you have the earlier rows. Now it's time to trim the wall. Finish the bottom of the wall with wall base. Use quarter round for inside corners and ceiling. Clean up the installation materials, dust the planks, and you're finished. You have a truly unique accent wall. You can add pictures, hang shelves, and enjoy your new room. Maintenance is easy. Just dust with a microfiber cloth and clean occasionally by damp wiping with water only. Enjoy your new walls. Live your life comfortably, surrounded by the warmth and style that gives you the freedom to express your true self. Our laminate planks will inspire you with their beauty and astound you with their durability. Because, after all, there's only one Pergo.